I'm Michael. This is Lessons from the Screenplay. In the last couple of weeks, every time I've mentioned to someone that we were working on a video comparing Sunset Boulevard and Parasite, a very puzzled look would appear on their face. And to be fair, that's completely understandable. On the surface, these two movies look very different. But underneath, they're actually quite similar. Most films tell stories of positive change. The protagonist overcomes a deep character flaw in order to become the best version of themselves. But both Sunset Boulevard and Parasite tell stories of disillusionment, featuring characters who believe they can achieve their dreams, but are ultimately confronted with a different, ugly reality. So today, I want to compare the character arcs found in both Sunset Boulevard and Parasite, to examine the lie the characters believe and the truth they're unwilling to accept, and to track how the decisions each character makes lead to the film's dramatic climax which will leave the protagonist's dreams shattered. Let's take a look at Sunset Boulevard and Parasite. In both a positive change arc and a disillusionment arc, the protagonist begins the film clinging to a lie, and by the end of the film, they are confronted by the hard truth. As K.M. Weiland writes in her book, Creating Character Arcs, just as in a positive change arc, the protagonist is growing into a better understanding of the truth, and yet the story is still a downer. The character is moving from a positive outlook to a negative one. His new truth isn't sunshine and roses, it's cold, hard facts. Sunset Boulevard tells the story of Joe Gillis, a young screenwriter in Hollywood who is struggling to make ends meet. The first 10 minutes of the film are dedicated to showing how desperate Joe is for money so much so that he has left behind any integrity he once had. I'd always heard that you had some talent. That was last year. This year I'm trying to earn a living. Joe believes money will solve all of his problems. The opening act of Parasite introduces the Kims, a family that, like Joe, is desperate for money. We see them chasing down free Wi-Fi and working menial jobs to barely scrape by. But despite their dire situation, the family's son, Ki Wu, is ambitious and optimistic, trying to sweet talk his way into a better position. Ki Wu believes his family can join the affluent class, if only he can make enough money. These are the lies the characters believe, and because both of them are ignorant to the hard truth they will eventually learn, both Joe and Ki Wu are willing to do anything in pursuit of their lies. So when opportunity knocks for Joe and Ki Wu, they answer. You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in silent pictures, used to be big. I am big. It's the pictures that got small. While fleeing debt collectors, Joe happens to park his car at the home of a former silent movie star who needs a screenwriter to help her work on a comeback script. While Joe thinks the script is terrible, he sees a way to take advantage of the situation. You know, I'm uh, pretty expensive. I get 500 a week. I wouldn't worry about money. I'll make it worth your while. Kiwu also seizes an opportunity when his friend Bean asks him to take over tutoring the daughter of a wealthy family, the Parks. And like Joe, Kiwu is willing to lie to make a little cash. Both characters are now actively pursuing their lie, and even though a dark ending to their arcs is on the horizon, at this step of their journey, everything seems great. For Joe, Norma represents success in an industry in which he is struggling. Her career has brought her fame, money, comfort, and something Joe has always wanted, a pool. And for Kiwu, the park's home represents a similar dream of success for himself and his family but soon they'll be confronted with a choice, and their fate will be determined by what they decide to do at the midpoint. Midpoints come in many forms, but in almost every case, the midpoint of the story is when the truth makes itself known. As we talked about in our video on Collateral, in stories where the protagonist changes for the better, the midpoint is the moment at which they can no longer ignore their lie and have to confront the truth. The same is true of negative change arcs, both Joe and Ki Wu are about to be confronted with the truth, but how they react to the truth will have fatal consequences. 
As Sunset Boulevard and Parasite build to their respective midpoints, everything is going well for Joe and Ki Wu. Although Joe isn't necessarily happy playing house with Norma, Empty the ashtray, will you, Joe, dear? He's gotten comfortable taking advantage of her vast wealth. In Parasite, Ki Wu and his sister Ki Jung use their influence on the parks to install their parents in other domestic positions, culminating in the evening when the parks leave for a camping trip and the Kims can finally revel in their victory and act like they own the place. In both of these films, the midpoint is an apparent victory for the characters, until the truth rears its ugly head. For Joe, the truth becomes clear at Norma's New Year's Eve party. It's quarter past ten. What time are they supposed to get here? Who? The other guests. There are no other guests. We don't want to share this night with other people. This is for you and me. Oh? Hold me tighter. Okay. Confronted with the reality of Norma's feelings for him, Joe can no longer ignore that he's sold his personal and artistic integrity for money prompting him to leave Norma's mansion and make plans to move in with a friend. Can you put me up for a couple of weeks? It just so happens we have a vacancy on the couch. I'll take it. Joe even runs into another young writer, Betty Schaefer, who reminds him of who he used to be. It's true, it's moving. Now why don't you use Who that wants character? true? Who wants moving? Drop that attitude. Here's something really worthwhile. But right when it seems like Joe might escape from his lie, a phone call presents him with a startling revelation that Norma has tried to kill herself. Madame got the razor from your room and she cut her wrists. What? <laughs> Max! Max! So Joe goes back to Norma and makes a decision that seals his fate. Joe embraces his lie, choosing financial security with Norma over integrity. In Parasite, the midpoint decision also arises as the result of a startling revelation for the characters. The Kims discover that the park's former housekeeper and her husband, people who are as poor as they used to be, have been living in the basement all along. <laughs> this revelation presents the Kims with the opportunity to be generous, to show solidarity with their fellow domestic servants. But instead, they choose to flex their newfound privilege. But in a matter of moments, the tables are turned when it's revealed that the Kims have been keeping a secret of their own from the parks. <laughs> The resulting struggle to silence Moon Kwong and her husband, to protect their lie at all costs, will set the Kims on a path they won't be able to turn back from. It's at this point that Ki Woo and Joe's journeys start to diverge. Both are confronted with a heavy dose of reality at the midpoint, but how they react to that reality sends them on different trajectories. Because while Joe continues to wrestle with the truth throughout the second half of Act 2, Ki Wu doubles down on the lie that he can change his family's life. So I want to pause, rewind, and discuss two other characters who have also been on their own important journeys this whole time. Norma and Ki Tech. At the beginning of Sunset Boulevard, Norma is a former movie star who believes in a lie of her own. That she is still famous and that the new movie Joe's writing can revitalize her career. Because they want to see me, me, Norma Desmond. And no matter how clear it is to others that she is no longer an in demand movie star, Norma's belief persists. It's important enough for Mr. DeMille to call me personally. The very idea of having some assistant call me, say I'm busy and hang up. Meanwhile, Ki Woo's father, Ki Tech, has been on a journey of doubt. While Ki Woo has been ruthlessly pursuing his dream of making money for his family, Ki Tech has been trailing along less confidently, at times even making mistakes that could compromise the family's plan. <laughs> so although Ki Woo fully believes that his family can fit in with a wealthy family like the Parks, Ki Tech isn't so sure. And after the midpoint, when Ki Tech helped restrain the couple in the basement, his uncertainty only grows, as he realizes that he is more similar to the man in the basement, Kyun Se, than the parks. 
이런 데서도? 아니 뭐땅 밑에 사는 사람들이 한둘인가? 반지하까지 치면 더 많지. So while Norma and Kiwu double down on their belief in the lie, Joe and Kitek descend further into doubt as the truth becomes harder to ignore. This doubt continues to eat away at Joe and Kitek right up until the climax. Here at the climax of the film, disillusionment stories differ the most from positive change stories. Instead of the characters learning the truth and growing into the best version of themselves, Scudder and the power of self-respect, the characters in Parasite and Sunset Boulevard choose to either ignore the truth or retreat from the life they once dreamed of. As the Parks throw an impromptu birthday party for their young son, Kiwu is more invested than ever in his lie, that he and his family will be rich someday, just like the Parks and their friends. So he decides to take a last, desperate action to remove the people who are threatening his dream. In Sunset Boulevard, Norma makes a similar decision and tries to drive away Betty, who threatens to take Joe from her. May I speak to Miss Betty Schaefer? Both Norma and Kibu are prepared to do something extreme in order to preserve their lives. But in both cases, it backfires. What are you doing? I'm packing. You're leaving me. Norma ultimately drives Joe away. Joe! Joe! And Kibu's moment of triumph does not go as planned. Kiwu and Norma glimpsed the truth but completely rejected it, and end the film continuing to believe their lies. But while Kiwu and Norma reject the truth, Joe and Kitek accept the truth, which leads to their ultimate disillusionment. In Parasite, going into the impromptu party, Kitek is more certain than ever that he and his family don't belong in the park's world and that they cannot change their lives. So when Kitek's despair culminates in an outburst of violence, he fully accepts the death of his dream and descends into the basement to hide indefinitely. In Sunset Boulevard, Joe lies to Betty, driving her away because he believes that he's not good enough for her. Good luck to you, Betty. You can finish that script on the way to Arizona. And he decides to give up his dream of being a screenwriter and to leave Hollywood altogether. But it's too late for Joe. His fateful decision at the midpoint to stay with Norma has already sealed his fate. There is no escape. All four characters have reached the end of their arcs and are worse off than when they started. Two have accepted the unpleasant truth, while the other two still cling to the empty promise of their lies. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Billy Wilder, who co-wrote and directed Sunset Boulevard, once described his film as a movie about a man who wanted a pool, got a pool, and ultimately drowned in a pool. Not only is it a darkly humorous way to sum up Sunset Boulevard, it's a perfect way to describe the disillusionment arc. A character pursues a dream, finally seems to achieve it, only to realize that the dream is hollow. Movies that follow a negative change arc can help us accept the loss of a belief system, face a difficult reality, or explore complex social problems. And despite the 70 years that separate the two films, Sunset Boulevard and Parasite both demonstrate how a story of disillusionment can resonate with and inspire an audience. Hey guys, Michael here. In the past, I found that a quick path to personal disillusionment is to get excited about a new project, dive right in, and then watch as my enthusiasm peters out and the project ends up in a pile with my other unfinished works. But I've also found ways to prevent this from happening, which is why I want to recommend Thomas Frank's class, Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last. It's one of the many great resources you can find on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people, with thousands of classes in writing, music, productivity, filmmaking, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you and your goals. The reason I'm recommending Thomas's productivity class is that it's all about the skill that enables you to learn more skills. 
And as he says, building habits isn't just about discipline. There are real world steps you can take to set yourself up for success and keep yourself on track. On a personal note, I have the pleasure of knowing Thomas and he's shared advice that I use to run this channel, the podcast, and many other aspects of my life. So check out his Skillshare class today, you won't be disappointed. The first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thanks to Thomas for all his advice, and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Whenever we come up with a kind of off-the-wall idea for a video, the tendency is to be concerned about how the algorithm will treat it. But because of our patrons, we always feel comfortable just going for it. So I want to say, as always, a huge thank you to our patrons on Patreon. We make these videos for you guys first and foremost. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.